By now, we all know that the Northeast Corridor is nowhere near up to speed anymore. I've done a couple of videos on the 457 mile line which stretches from Boston to Washington, including covering the Gateway Program, which I'll link in the description below, that will rejuvenate the area between Newark, New Jersey and New York Penn Station, and a video on the upgraded Acela cars that will hopefully bring a new idea to American high-speed rail. So far, the focus has primarily been on specific areas of the line, but today I'm going to explain a huge plan that has been put in place for the entire Northeast Corridor, as well as branches towards Springfield, Massachusetts and Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. In my last video about Amtrak's Avelia Liberty train sets, I briefly mentioned a plan called Connect NEC 2037. Today I'm going to be diving into the more than 60 pages of documentation surrounding the project, its hopes, and the projected timeline. The Connect NEC 2037 plan is headed and organized by the Northeast Corridor Commission, a Congress-authorized group that develops coordinated strategies to improve the Northeast Corridor as a whole. The commission includes lead members from every state's Department of Transportation that the NEC runs through, leaders from operators along the NEC like SEPTA, the MBTA, and NJ Transit, United States Department of Transportation representatives, and representatives from Amtrak, the owner of most of the corridor. Connect NEC 2037 is a 15 year plan created by the Commission to organize reinvestment and repairs across the Northeast Corridor, leading to more frequent and reliable service, which in turn would have a domino effect on local economies and connections. The plan in total is expected to cost upwards of $170 billion in inflation adjusted dollars, possible because of the passing of the bipartisan infrastructure law by President Biden. The plan splits the Northeast Corridor into five different regions based on operators and right-of-way owners. New England, where MBTA and CT Rail operate, Connecticut Westchester, where CT Rail and Metro North operate, the New York City Metro area, where Long Island Railroad and NJ Transit operate, the Mid-Atlantic North region, where SEPTA and NJ Transit operate, and the Mid-Atlantic South region, where Mark and the Virginia Railway Express operate. This split allows the plan to clearly mark objectives between operators and right-of-way owners within each region. Because the plan is a collective effort from all of the state's governments, the intended benefits and effects of the plan will be felt by the entire line. As opposed to the Gateway Program, for example, which is only headed by New York and New Jersey with no effect on surrounding states. The Commission hopes to run upwards of 50 to 100% more Amtrak trains between Boston and Washington DC, as well as 60% more local commuter trains along the corridor in each region. By way of a domino effect, the Commission also predicts an increase of 900,000 jobs by way of the Connect 2037 investment and 300,000 new households within a 15-minute radius of the line in areas like the Bronx, North Brunswick, New Jersey, and Southeast Baltimore, Maryland. The Commission also predicts a heavy environmental improvement by way of the corridor, reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 750,000 metric tons as a result of the new riders choosing the Northeast Corridor, which is fully electrified and does not require the use of diesel engines. In the future, I hope to release more videos surrounding this plan, which focus more on specific areas and the improvements for each area. For now, however, I'd like to highlight the major improvements that are being targeted by this plan. In New England and Connecticut, riders can hope to see improvements to New Haven Union and Boston South stations, as well as multiple bridge replacements as a result of this plan. In the New York City metro area and Mid-Atlantic North region, rehabilitation of the two New York City tunnels and the Gateway program, as well as signaling improvements are the main targets for this area. As you continue traveling south down the corridor, signaling upgrades and tunnel programs are the main focuses around Baltimore, Aberdeen, Maryland, and Washington DC. But beyond just the domino effect benefits from Connect NEC 2037, the thing we really care about is how the trains themselves will be affected by these programs. Let's start completely zoomed out, looking at the largest operator along the Northeast Corridor, the owner, Amtrak. Through Connect 2037 NEC, a huge time change comes to the Acela service. Better signaling and track reliability means Acela services will complete the New York-Washington stretch in just 2 hours and 30 minutes, and the northern stretch to Boston in a little over 3 hours. Amtrak also hopes to increase service between New York and Boston by 10 trains, resulting in service every hour between the two northeast hubs. 
trains to the Springfield and Harrisburg branches will increase in frequency, with both directions seeing 16 round trips a day at the very minimum. But the biggest difference comes between New York City and Philadelphia. Improvements along the Northeast Corridor in New Jersey means that Amtrak will nearly double the service along the New Jersey stretch, bringing in 37 new trains for a total of 82 round trips a day, eight minutes shorter in length than they are currently. Now let's look at the individual commuter rails, arguably the most important portions of the corridor. In the New England area, the biggest improvements will be seen along the Providence Boston and Wickford Boston corridors, where MBTA trains will cut their journey by upwards of 20 minutes along the corridor. Amtrak will also provide new service between Boston and New Haven and Springfield and New York City, resulting in five times that of the present day service levels. In addition, the improvements to New Haven Union, Boston South, and Hartford stations will make rider experiences throughout the New England and Connecticut region smoother, more efficient, and more comfortable. Arguably the region that will feel the heaviest impact is the NYC Metro and New Jersey area. The Connect NEC 2037 project will fund the Gateway program and countless other modernization projects, improving train speeds and capacities along the Northeast Corridor and through the North River Tunnels. Upwards of 48 new trains will be scheduled during peak time, 42 of them being NJ Transit. In addition, New Jersey Transit's Maine, Bergen, and Pascack Valley lines will get new one-seat rides to Penn Station, New York, by way of a loop near Secaucus Junction. Both the East and North River tunnels will be rehabilitated, New York Penn Station will be reconstructed and expanded, and the stretch of track between Secaucus and Newark Penn Station will be upgraded and expanded to ensure increased reliability and efficiency. The reconstruction and addition of new tunnels under the Hudson River will boost train service by 120% between New Jersey and New York thanks to the doubled tunnel space. As we head into the Philadelphia metro area, the largest boosts will occur with SEPTA service. The Paoli, Thorndale, and Trenton lines will see expanded and increased service throughout the entire day and speed up the connection between Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Newark, Delaware. The Harrisburg trackage will also see upgrades to signals and interlockings, allowing Amtrak services to reach Pennsylvania's capital city in shorter time spans. As we head into the nation's capital region, the main additions in service will be seen in the Baltimore-Washington corridor, where more Amtrak, Mark, and VRE service will be implemented, creating additional round trips throughout the day. Mark will also extend to Newark and Delaware, connecting with SEPTA services and creating a linked public transit system beyond Amtrak. New expansions at Baltimore Penn Station and Washington Union Station will double the current capacities for each station and improve comfort and accessibility. Last but certainly not the least, the program will set aside funds for the replacement of multiple bridges and tunnels in the Maryland and the capital, many of them currently over a hundred in years old and a large inhibitor in the efficiency of the corridor. Corridor-wide, the Connect NEC plan will call for 1,600 miles of track rehabilitation, 2,500 replacements of catenary structures, more than 400 miles of signals replaced, 11 renewed rail yards up and down the corridor, and nearly a million rail ties replaced to ensure a smoother ride up and down the eastern seaboard. A project as large as this doesn't come without heavy costs. Overall, after factoring in all of the costs of every single project anticipated in the next 15 years, the total cost of the Connect NEC 2037 plan comes to $135 billion in 2023 dollars, or $175 billion when expected inflation is accounted. Significant progress has been made on the funding side through the signing of the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law by President Biden. This plan ensured a large portion of the project was funded and is part of the larger federal, state, and local source funding that accounts for 40% of the total project cost. The rest of the cost will have to find a source eventually, but for now, the expected funding will carry the projects through to the 2026 fiscal year. Another important financing plan was the FSP for Intercity Passenger Rail Grant, which allocated $16 billion for 25 specific projects, including the Connecticut, Devon, Saugatuck, and Walk Bridge replacements in Connecticut, the East River, Hudson Tunnel, and Sawtooth Bridge projects in New York and New Jersey, and the three bridge replacements and the Frederick Douglass Tunnel Program in Maryland. 
As we look ahead, the NEC Commission will release a new plan in 2025 called Connect NEC 2040, which will consider new ridership trends, update plans based on past progress, and further address funding and resource constraints. For now though, that is what we know regarding the future of the Northeast Corridor. The entire document plan of Connect NEC 2037 is over 65 pages long, so if you'd like more specific, detailed videos on each region in the future, please let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to keep watching your favorite transit content weekly. Thank you for watching.